Let's start to walk through it. Um, firstly, before we get to the whole shape, tell me the important points you can know right away before you know anything about the shape of it. Tell me the points. Zero. Okay, the origin. Because again, we're looking at, um, we did the square there, we're going to do the square root here. The square root of zero is zero. This other square root of zero is zero. And lastly, this square root of zero is zero. What else? Pi on two. At x equals pi on two, you get y equals one. And the square root of one is still one. Okay, so far so good. <clears throat> on my analysis, I have no other important points to notice. Now, what can you tell me? Between pi and two pi, it doesn't exist. Yeah. <coughs> so, I've got a domain restriction here, right? And the reason for that was because... You can't have a domain uh, yeah. No, 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 it's not that I can't. It's not that I can't. It's it's that I don't. Because <laughs> I won't. You know? Because, because... The square root of negative values, you can take the square root of negative values, it's just that they're not real. They're not on this plane, they're on some other plane. Okay? Don't let me ever hear you saying, you can't, you can. Okay? You of all people should know you can, I'm just not drawing them. Can you say you can't display them on this real... Like, how do you... Yeah, word if, <laughs> if your next word is display, yes, you can say you can't. But, I'd much prefer you to say, that they're just not on this graph. They exist, you can, and they're just somewhere else. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> Alright, so I'm not going to display anything from pi to 2 pi. Okay? So therefore, what's interesting is in here. Tell me what's going on. Okay, so the square root of sine x will always be above this blue line over here because what is it that tells me it's always going to be above? Just barely understand because these values are all between non one, right? And therefore, when you like the number this came from had to be higher, right? Sorry, it had to be lower, so that's why the square root is going to be higher, right? Remember the example I gave you was the square root of a quarter. I always go back to this, right? Um, you've got to, I think it's really important just practically when you are confused about something because you've got so much knowledge in your head. Go back to examples that you know really well, okay? So one example that people get really badly, even though you've learned to do it years ago, is when you factorize this, people get confused between the factorization, that pair of numbers, versus the, the roots, right? And people think, oh wait, that means the roots are two and three? No way, the factorization is two and three. Wait, which one's which, okay? Now I always come back to this one because I can do this in my sleep. And it's like, oh, well, this means that if it's equal to zero, then x is negative two and or negative three, okay? So this is my example that I go always go to. Wait, does the square root go up or does it go down? Well, this is the square root of one on the square root of four, which is a half, yes? So a quarter goes, goes up. Okay. Now, it, it, it does go up, I'm always gonna stay above, but there's one more thing I wanna notice, right? Do you remember when we did x versus the square root of x, right? I noted something weird was happening at the origin. What's happening at the origin? No gradient. You've got no gradient. Okay, you've got this vertical tangent there. The gradient here is one. Well, the gradient here is also one. Okay. So in fact, you're gonna get the same vertical kind of tangent there that you got over here. Okay? And then the rest of it you've got to meet up to there. So you're gonna get this shape. And then you got to go from pi on 2 to pi, you do the same thing but in reverse. So you get this shape. There you go. Uh, that's it. That's the whole square root of sinus, at least in the domain that we're interested in. Okay. Now just before we leave this guy, I, I mentioned at the beginning sometimes you'll encounter this. Okay. Now this is very closely related to this. In what way are these two related? In what way? Hmm. Um, how, how would you get from this line? What operation would you apply to get from this line to this line? You take the square root of both sides, but you guys know if you have something like x squared equals 25 and you take the square root of both sides, you don't just get x equals 5, do you? You get. Good. So over here, same deal, right? If this you want to write in this form, then you have to have a plus minus, right? So therefore, if I, I've asked you to draw y equals the square root of sine x, if instead I ask you to draw this, okay, then I can take the square root of both sides. 
which gives me this. So what am I going to add? Yeah, the flip. I'm just, yeah, think back to the first lesson we did on further graphing, which was this which means I've got the other side as well, which uh, is down here. Oh, it's so Okay. Now it's actually not quite a circle because because the reason I know it's not a circle is because going this way, the the we call this the semi no we call this the minor axis. Okay. That distance is come on you know what the distance is it's two right. But what's this distance? It's pi. Very good. Three point one four. So therefore it's not circular, but it looks pretty circular, doesn't it? It's elliptical. Okay, which is kind of neat. Um, and in fact, if you go to to Desmos and you put in this. Okay, you're going to get your axes, and then you're just going to get a bunch of bubbles. This one, mm -hmm. and then this one, and then all the way off, because of course it is periodic. Right? Okay. Yes, question. Can you put a Hold on. You're talking about here? No, uh, at pi. At x equals pi? No, 2 pi. 2 pi? Over here? Okay, yes. Uh, that's a great question. Very nice and technical. If you were asked to draw, this is a really good, just note this. If you were asked to draw y equals the square root of sine x like I have done, and you were asked to do it from 0 to 2 pi, okay, you will notice uh, over here and over here, I haven't done any closed or hollow circles, uh, closed or filled or hollow circles, because um, like when you've got a value here, it's like when you end there, you end there. Okay, it's done, you don't need to say anything special. But, as has been very astutely pointed out, over here at 2 pi, the next cycle begins. So in fact, you can take that value, but I'm not drawing the rest of it, so I have to say something here to indicate, yes, part of the graph does exist there. And if you did that, just for the sake of completeness, you put one filled circle, I kind of end up putting the rest of them, just because it's weird to have one filled circle and not have any of the rest of them. Okay? So that's what it would look like.